Namo Adhidhafa, good morning. Thank you for joining me for our daily practice check-in. Listen, listen, listen. This beautiful sound calls us back to our true home. The third mindfulness training. Aware of the suffering caused by sexual misconduct, I vow to cultivate responsibility and learn ways to protect the safety and integrity of individuals, couples, families, and society. I'm determined not to engage in sexual relations without love and a long-term commitment. To preserve the happiness of myself and others, I am determined to respect my commitments and the commitments of others. I will do everything in my power to protect children from sexual abuse and to prevent couples and families from being broken by sexual misconduct. Our Dharma reading this morning is Gestures of Respect by Ajahn Yatiko. This is from Beginning Our Day by the Monastics of Abhyagiri Monastery. Yesterday, I clearly saw a defilement in myself that I'd like to speak about and share with you so you can follow along with my process and possibly make use of it yourselves. In the morning, I was putting out seats for puja on the ordination platform. For a long time, I'd been resistant to the idea of putting out a seat for Lumpur Pasano when he's away, as he is now. There seems to be an ambiguity about whether we put out a seat for him when he's gone. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. There's no established etiquette for this. I had thought, he's not here, what's the point? In the past, whenever someone put a seat out for him, something in my heart would roll its figurative eyes. But yesterday morning, as this reaction was coming up, I recognized what an unpleasant mind state it was. I said to myself, wait a minute, putting out a seat is an act of respect for Lumpur. Lumpur is our teacher who has given us so much and helped us in so many ways that we know, uh, that we know and don't know. This act reminds us of his presence in the monastery as the leader of the community. So when I did put out a seat for him, it came with a nice feeling of relief to know that I could overcome this defilement of which I was previously unaware. It reminded me of Ajahn Sumedho's story about washing Ajahn Chah's feet. When Ajahn Chah would come back from alms round, 20 monks would come running out to wash his feet. Ajahn Sumedho would roll his eyes and think how stupid it looked for 20 grown men to be washing one man's feet he thought this was ridiculous and said to himself, I'm never going to do that. This happened day after day, until he eventually realized that having this thought was causing him suffering. The next day, there were 21 monks washing Ajahn's feet, Ajahn Chah's feet. Ajahn Sumedho enjoyed doing it and felt really good about it. By bringing this up, I'm not saying that putting out a seat should now be established as monastery etiquette. I don't feel so strongly about it, and if someone does not set out a seat, I think that's okay. Rather, I'm trying to encourage us all to reflect on our attitudes about respect and to question why we feel the way we do. We can simply ask ourselves whether these attitudes are causing us to suffer in any way. By examining our attitude in this way, we might find that we have a sense of relief when we choose an attitude that leads to a bright mind state instead of an unpleasant one. Showing respect is a nice thing. It brings up a nice feeling. It doesn't matter if people criticize us or think showing respect is stupid. If we do something that feels right, that feels kind, then it is a good thing to do. At the same time, 
It is not as if we are following a rule. It comes from free choice. And that's what makes it beautiful. If this were a rule, and we put out a seat with a sense that this is what we were supposed to do, that wouldn't feel very special. It needs to come from the heart. When it does come from the heart, there's an attitude we can have of wanting to use whatever opportunities are available to show respect and be reminded of something good, something uplifting. We can use that attitude in our practice no matter what situation we find ourselves in. We can do something that is good or kind for another person. We can be forgiving, patient, thoughtful, and helpful with each other. This is the foundation of group harmony. We have a harmonious community of both lay people and monastics, and that harmony has its foundation in mutual respect. May all beings be well. May all beings be happy. May all beings be peaceful. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you for joining me this morning.